Good morning, this is Steve Gladys from Steve Gladys Leadership Partners here at uh, wonderful George Mason Enterprise Center in Fairfax, Virginia. It's 28 degrees outside, but it's warm in here, so glad to have you all here today. We're talking about bullets, bulletproof leadership in this series. It's a five-part series that we're talking about. If you've listened to the introduction, you know kind of what we're going to be doing. The first of these is questions, not answers, make the difference in leadership. Um, there's really a, an interesting thing here that for many, many, many years, uh, most of us thought that the military model, or what we call command and control, was really the best way to best way to lead people. You know that when you got in charge, you had a certain level of confidence, you had a certain level of experience, and um, when you made a decision, that was the decision, and it was you know my way or the highway, or as one of my friends says, uh, it's my way or you are the highway. So. Anyway, um, we used to think this command and control worked because it, it seemed to work in the military. Here's an interesting thing. A study done by Richard Boyanzas shows that it really didn't even work in the military itself that well, or in, in places like law enforcement that are kind of paramilitary, except in emergency situations. And so we began to look at this, and we began to look at how, what, does, what does seem to work in, uh, in the, the work situation, and what does work is a thing called a questions, not answers. The leaders who use a coaching approach, which is asking more and more questions about what people need, as opposed to giving them the answers, seems to be far more, not only effective, but far more scalable. If a leader takes on all the questions for themselves, or takes on all the actions for themselves, and has to direct everybody to do things, after you get beyond eight or ten people in your direct report levels, you don't have the skill or the energy to carry it forth anymore. So what we found out is that the questions, the same things that coaches lead, uh, use um, to help people figure out their own answers is the way to go. And it's based on the premise that people closest to the problem are the people most likely to be able to solve those problems. Duh! Not that hard when you really think about it. And so what we do is we tell clients to, to ask four questions. We ask leaders to ask four questions of people coming into their office. Let's call them uh, direct reports coming into the office with a problem. Ask them a set of four questions around four different areas in kind of a circle that looks like this. So it kind of looks like this. With the issue first, ask them what's the issue, who's involved in the issue, how, how did the issue begin, where is it going, um, uh, can you give me an example. The second, the second piece of this is what's the uh, impact, who's, again these four questions from above. Who's, or what's the impact, who's impacted, how are they impacted, how much will it cost. Um, finally, what's the ideal situation? And again, we've talked about this in a previous book called The Coach Approach Leader. We have a whole series on this. This is just an overview. But what's the ideal situation going forward? What would be the ideal situation for you? What would you like to see happen? And finally, um, what's your intention going forward? The intention is, the questions around intention are, what do you plan on doing? When are you going to do it by? And how will I know you did it? Leaders who take, who, who, who don't ask, who, who don't engage in community control, who ask questions, who take people through this, this wheel, this uh, coach approach um, format um, around four eyes, the issue, the impact, the ideal state, and the intention, are far more effective because they can, they can lead f uh, many more people and get people closest to the problem to answer their problems. Great way to lead, a simple way to lead, a way to lead that doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't create issues for you going down the line in terms of scalability and in terms of resistance. Uh, thanks for listening. This is Steve Gladys from Steve Gladys Leadership Partners here at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.